Remember Cursor, the Gentic AI IDE? Well, it has gotten a brand new update called the version 0.45 release that introduces many new features like the introduction of a better code base understanding system, a new tab mode, you have MCP servers, you have tickets to PR, and much more. For the people who forgot what Cursor is, it's an agentic AI code editor known for its composer feature, which is an agentic component that can autonomously execute your tasks for you, from debugging your entire code base to generating a full stack application. And now they have released many new improvements and features that we're going to be taking a look at throughout today's video. Also guys, please keep in mind that Cursor is rolling out with this update, meaning that it is not available for everyone just yet. They're rolling out different access points to different users and different plans over the next couple of weeks. So just keep that in mind. Now, for the people who are looking towards updating to the latest release, if you have been rolled out with this new update, you can go over to Cursor and you can type in Command Shift P and then you can search up Cursor Attempt Update. You can then simply go ahead and press on this and it will update to the latest release if you have been rolled out with this new update. And obviously if you do not have Cursor, you can easily install it off of their website for your operating system. But now let's get started and highlight all the new features a part of this new Cursor update. Starting off with the integration with MCP servers. For the people who do not know, MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. Essentially, it's a new open standard by Anthropic that lets AI assistants connect to various data sources seamlessly. And what this basically means is that Cursor can now integrate with MCP, which allows you to run sequential thinking servers. You can also run Anthropic servers as well as community hosted ones. In this case, this is someone running a self based database through an MCP server. Before we get started, I just want to mention that you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to the World of AI newsletter. I'm constantly posting different newsletters on a weekly basis. So this is where you can easily get up-to-date knowledge about what is happening in the AI space. So definitely go ahead and subscribe as this is completely for free. Another new feature is that Cursor now allows you to go all the way from a ticket creation to a pull request. This is where it automates the entire process now. This is including improvements like supporting for custom tools where it can extend Cursor's functionality even more with better semantic search and it can also make it super easier for you to find relevant code. Plus, it now also has the ability to automatically fix different lints which is going to streamline the process of cleaning up your code. With these features, you have a way for you to powerfully automate different tasks from the start to finish in your development workflow. A small but pretty big feature is that if you are to go over to models, you'll notice that they have now integrated DeepSeq R1 and DeepSeq version 3, which is now supported and you can enable it within your settings tab. You can go ahead and add these models and you can simply go ahead and click on the toggle button to enable them. Next, we have this new update where they've improved diff views. This is where you can now see the hunk header or the git diff for edits, which is going to make it clear when reviewing changes. But the thing is, many people found this update a bit confusing, especially with the new button system. This is where they have two different buttons. You have the save all and the apply feature. The save all is where you can accept all and the apply feature is where you can apply all. They are similar in terms of highlighting the functionality, which is kind of redundant like having OK and confirm buttons for the same action. There's also a bug where reapplying files multiple times doesn't actually show any changes, which is why it's causing a lot of frustration. So this is something that is going to be worked upon over the next couple of days and weeks. Next, we have cursor rules. This is something that allows users to write repository level rules and save them in the dot cursor slash rules directory. The agent can now automatically select the appropriate rule and it can follow based off the situation it's placed in with the rule directory. There's also global rules that can now be set easily with the globe icon and the term globs has been replaced with the auto attach feature. This is something that will still be referred to as globs in the YAML formatter header but to make it easier you can see which rules are applied with this little book icon which is going to show the active rules and it's going to give you a clear overview of what's running in the back end. 
This right here is probably the biggest release of part of this update, which is the new introduction of a better code base understanding system. This is where cursor is now going to enhance how the agent interprets and interacts with your code. It's a feature that will be available to all users starting in version 0.45 over the next couple of weeks, but this is something that will have better understanding. It will make better changes to your overall code base. And additionally, the agent can now track recent changes, which is going to allow it to use a tool that highlights changes made between your user message, giving it a more clear context for more accurate suggestions, as well as different actions. It's going to bring in a smoother experience as well as an intelligent workflow when the agent needs to react to the code updates. And in this video, you can see that it has the ability to reference any sort of terminal based command and it can also reference what's happening in the terminal, which is really, really nice. Within the composer, you have the ability to now compare your code to previous commits. And this is definitely a game changer for debugging. It easily helps you pinpoint where things went wrong. And in this case, you can see that you can add in multiple terminals and this will get you a better idea for you to debug or for the case of debugging, because this is going to allow you to showcase different parts of your system simultaneously, which is going to speed up the process of troubleshooting. But you get a good idea. You have the ability to reference multiple terminals as well as multiple file types, folders and workspaces. Next, we have the introduction of the Fusion model. This is where they train their new tab model, which is much better at handling context jumps and long running tasks, which is improving the overall functionality of longer based coding tasks. Now, one of the most standout features of part of this is that they have introduced a Fusion powered navigation system within the tab model, which predicts smart cursor jumps, and it's gonna make your transitions better as you work over your task. You'll also get AI powered edits that will suggest real time improvements right where the cursor is, helping you optimize your code as you go. And you can see this on the screen right now, wherever your cursor is, it'll provide the best optimized code. You also have a next action prediction feature, which is going to remove repetitive actions and it's going to keep you focused and it's going to allow you to work on what matters when you're coding. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below or you can consider joining our private discord where you can access multiple subscriptions to different ai tools for free on a monthly basis plus daily ai news and exclusive content plus a lot more now there's also a lot of small things that i don't think it's worth covering through the video but if you're interested in that definitely take a look at the changelog which showcases all of these smaller things but essentially Right now, I've heard that there's a lot of bugs currently with this release, so just keep that in mind. And I don't think you should update right away. Let it sit for a little bit, let people find errors, and let the team actually work on those errors over the next couple of weeks. If you're working on trying to use this new update for your production code or for whatever task you're using cursor for. So just keep that in mind. But that's basically it for this new release. This is definitely a great new upgrade towards uh, what Cursor has been doing over the past couple of weeks in terms of improving the Cursor and improving the different agent modes that have been prevalent within Composer. So huge props to the Cursor team. I'll leave all the links in the description below so that you can take a look at this. Make sure you follow me on the newsletter. You can take a look at our previous uploads over here. Follow me on the Patreon as well as Twitter and make sure you guys subscribe, turn the notification bell like this video and please take a look at our previous videos because there's a lot of content that you will truly benefit from but with that thought guys have an amazing day spread positivity and i'll see you guys fairly shortly peace out fellas